Okay, it's really dark out. I'm halfway through a project. I wasn't actually planning on filming this, but it seems like people might actually want to see it, so... Alright, more stuff for the channel, right? Okay, so, uh, here we are with our 1989 Jeep Cherokee XJ. Uh, a while ago, I installed these WJ uh, leather 10-way power heated seat bullshits. And, you know, they're cool and all that. But... I don't know what it is, man. That lumbar support doesn't agree with me at all. It kills me. I, I just, I can't do long trips. It, it doesn't work. I don't know what it is. I've 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 tried every freaking combination under the sun. I'm moving that thing up, down, around, left, right, and out of town, and nothing. Just nothing. So, what I done did is I went to a junkyard, and I was looking around at what would be a good seat for long trips. And, you know, I like my Civic seat a lot. You know, my buddy doesn't really agree with me. He thinks I'm crazy. But I don't know, man. It's just, it's perfect. I sit in that thing, and it's just, mm, right where I needed to be. So I figured, all right, I'll go to the junkyard, maybe get uh, some Civic seats. But, um, you know, then I was thinking about it and looking around, seeing what was out there. And I saw some vans and minivans and stuff like that. And I went, oh, yeah, people seem to go on really long trips with those, you know, minivans, stuff like that. Go across the country in one of them things. So I started trying out seats. I tried Windstars and uh, the old ass, you know, Rams and, you know, basically every single minivan and big van I could find. And the choice came down to two seats. The first one that I was really impressed with was a Chevy Astro van. That one had some pretty nice support, you know, that was legit. It felt really good. You know, you sit in that thing, you're like, hmm, not bad. It was missing a little foam out of the seat. Uh, and the weird thing is the adjustments are on the inside. So, like, when you're when you're sitting in your seat, all the lever stuff is over here. Well, the problem is you've got a big center console to worry about, so that really wasn't going to work for me. So, uh, the other thing, like, all those minivans, it just wasn't really doing it, you know? It wasn't feeling good. And then I came across a Toyota Sienna. That thing right there. Ooh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. I sat in that, and it was feeling gorgeous. So this right here is a stinky, smelly cloth seat out of a Toyota Sienna. Uh, it's already completely, uh, you know, disassembled. I ripped off all the side panels. Uh, most of them were just clips. There was a screw hiding back here. Uh, the seat brackets came out a little complicated. There was two bolts here. There was one bolt here. Because this has, this has a couple interesting moving systems. So here's the seat bracket, but before I get there. Uh, so here is the tilt. This makes the back tilt forward and back. But then we have this goofy thing. And this is like a, a pump action thing. So when you pump it, the back the back piece moves. And and the, the forward piece kind of moves with it. And it's, I don't know, it, I guess it like either changes the angle or boosts it or it, it does something. So whatever. So that's interesting. And on the manual slider right here, you know, it's just your standard. You pull this up and then you can move the slider forward and backwards. So I guess I'm going to have to show you pictures. But uh, that bracket right there is a lot bigger than this bracket right here. So this is the bracket that I custom welded uh, from the WJ. So this right here, we got our two itty bitty little tracks there. You can see <laughs> there's quite a bit of gap that we have to fill. Uh, but you know, all I did, you know, this had the, the forward facing uh, tabs. So I just sliced it and then put my own little, you know, feet on there to line up with everything. I got a whole video on that if you want to lock on that. But basically, uh, since that track wasn't even going to come close to working, we're going to use the power stuff, so that's cool. We'll have more adjustments. And, uh, you know, this already fits. So I know for a fact that this fits in there where I need it to be. Uh, if you notice, it has to be all the way over to the outside of the vehicle because of the firewall. Or not the firewall, the transmission tunnel. So if you come over here and you look at how the floor space is, Notice all this over here. No es bueno for seat brackets. See how narrow these two holes are compared to, you know, all that room? Well, I took Mr. Sledgy over here and gave her some wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. And now she's not nearly so angled because before it used to come out to like here and go down. So I welded some panels in so it doesn't really want to bend there. I would have to probably go underneath and bend this part out so that I could push this in. Monster line holds up pretty well, besides, you know, like the real, like, high stress points. The rest of it actually held up pretty well. Not too big. But, yeah, uh, so I hammered this for clearance because, and I'll show you another picture, the seat bracket is, like, literally touching that thing and not even close to the ground. 
So we are going to do a bastardized uh, DIY, how the heck do you fit any old seat into an XJ. So what we got on this Sienna seat, we have a front brace and we have a rear brace. Uh, the rear is literally just that hole. That's it. And on the front, we have these two holes and this like thing that pivots around, I guess, to help with the back. So if we look at the stock seat bracket over here, this whole thing is one flat piece. Okay, so the back and the front are connected. That's good for us. That means there's no weird, goofy swivel stuff and all that bullshit. Um, so what we have to do is figure out how to take this up and down angle and convert it to a, you know, sideways angle. So here is the bracket. Here's the close side. This is going to be the easy bit. Basically all we need is a little right angle piece. So we're going to have a flat piece that comes out and a flat piece that comes down. And we're going to vroom vroom drill a hole and pop it in there. And that should be good. And the same on the other side. Except we'll just have two bolt holes instead of one. So hey, extra, extra support. Cool. Now the hard part is going to be over here. Because if you notice, there is a humongo yap. Now uh, I already had the bracket in the vehicle and the seat in the vehicle to make sure that everything fits. Okay, it's, it's how it needs to be offset and all that stuff. So yeah, I'll show you that later when we uh, put this thing back in there. But what we have to do is bridge the gap from here to here. And uh, let, let's do a little physics lesson here, okay? So we have our, our plate and it's gonna bolt here, right? Okay, all well and dandy. Well, think about that. When you sit, you're gonna go like this and this thing's gonna bend. This is only held on with one nut. So it's gonna put stress on that nut and you know, it's gonna you know bend around on that bracket. And the other thing is if that bends at all, it's going to put stress on this bracket. So it's going to bend this one in. So uh, that's no as bueno. We don't want that. We want more support. My plan is going to be we run our first flat bracket like that, and then we're going to have a second one on an angle that bolts down here to give us some of that support. So that supports us at the, the center of the weight. So that way there's not going to be nearly as much bending. Uh, on the rear, uh, we do have the room for a flat plate to go all the way across. So I am going to do an entire flat plate on the rear so that we're not putting all the stress on this one little itty bitty bracket. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to go like this. And then we're going to have a right angle piece so that that'll bolt on there and good to go. Okay, so here we have our C bracket sitting in here. Now the interesting thing is now that this is in here, you can see how freaking crooked I put it in the first time. Yeah, that back end needs to uh, swoop this way quite a bit. So yeah, that might be part of my back issues too, is the fact that the seat's in there crooked. It's off by a bit of a margin too. Well, at least a whole size. But anyway, okay, so we have our cardboard. So uh, we're going to put the seat in here and see how it wants to sit so that we can figure out exactly where we need to cut our pieces at so we can uh, figure that business out. Okay. So this is what it looks like when the seat's installed. Well, at least in the body of the vehicle. Okay, so we got a few fitment points here that we got to worry about. First off, the seat belt, um, you know, retractor hump. That is number one. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a uh, tight squeeze. I think it is actually touching over there, so that is part one. And depending on how far back you go, this is going to hit that. So you're not going to get a whole lot of back backwards going. But if we look at the front... That front seat might be a little far forward, I don't know. I think it was adjusted. Uh, the height, as far as the height goes, looks to be about the same. So that's good. Uh, but this is the lowest setting, I think. So there is that. So you can see how the back like shifts down and stuff. That's interesting. Okay, so now we can see exactly where the seat falls on our cardboard. But notice it is going to sit a little higher than that, so maybe we could make a, a bit of a drop bracket. Who knows, maybe that'll give us a little more strength. Because the farther down we can put this thing, the better. Uh, so that we have more, more adjusty room, because if you're tall, it's going to put you closer to the ceiling. But yeah, you can see where everything lines up, where everything lays. This is our second fitment point over here. This is the big spot. 
Because if you notice when I made the first bracket, I had to cut that huge angle because there ain't no room there. So I had to cut quite a bit out of that because this transmission tunnel is in the way. But Mr. Sledgy, he can uh, he can help you with that. There's actually quite a bit of free room down there. But yeah, you can see that we're basically on that wall. So we can drop it down a little bit. But that is our tightest clearance point. So we might have to trim that real careful. Uh, another thing, when you're mounting this, make sure she's in there straight. Because like I said, when I put the other one in there, it's a little crooked. So it's nice that this thing's got little lines on there. We can use those lines to make sure that it's going straight with the body. You want to point, you know, forward, not, not sidewards. Come over to the back end. You can see what we're working with down here. So we got that little that little hole mount. That's going to go to this guy right here. There you go, you can get a better view of this. I don't know how much uh, how much free room we got if we were to take that plastic off or cut into it or something. There's not a lot of room in these XJs, man. Not a lot of room. It's a little tight. So here's the other side over here. You can see that, that that's where that other foot is. But our track is over here. So yeah, we got a little bit of uh, filler to do there. Okay, so I've been playing around with the seat, you know, taking it in, taking it out, making little brackets and stuff like that. So now we're starting to get a little hung up over here, okay? So if you notice, my goal is to keep it as far away from the door as possible. Now we still got a decent little gap over here. But the problem is this little bracket... This little bracket here is right on the edge where before there was a bit of a gap. So the problem is this can't drop down so that we can make the bracket the way we want it. So, over there, yeah, plenty of clearance. If you notice, all that really is is just a swivel piece with a, a cross brace that runs all the way across the other side. I do like that brace. I would like to retain it if possible. But this little section, I think that's got to go. So what I might do is slice it right here so that this can drop down another inch. Because, you know, if we ever need to pick the front up or whatever, that's what the power part is. I actually plugged it back in and made sure that it went all the way down on both sides. So now we can rock it back and forth and do whatever. So it's the it's in its center and the lowest part of its travel. So, yeah. And then it's just trying to figure out how to actually get access to that nut. So we can uh, put that together later. So the front is a, a bit complex. So I'm going to do the front after I do the rear because I figure... We can do the rear, we can get that aligned and set up because that's just a simple set, uh, pivot point. And then from here, then we can work on the front part. So, uh, yeah, I cut that part off so we get the clearance we need now. Cool. So, my idea for this side, simple right angle bracket. And since this back part can pivot up and down, this can actually go inside a bit more. So, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to need to tilt any farther back than that. So, we can make this one even with the rail, not a problem. So... I think I need to start cutting and getting something done so I can actually make some good progress here. So hopefully we can get the back looking a little something like this. So we're going to have our two little thingers. One that sticks up here, one that sticks up there. And what I'm going to do is measure it to the thickness of the seat. And then uh, I guess we'll figure out the holes later once we know exactly where we want this thing to sit at. Well, I was finally able to find uh, the right adapters to get this freaking thing to stay on there. But man, they don't last very long. Didn't even get to cut the whole damn thing out. But this will be the longest piece, so after this will be cut, uh, shorter cuts. Okay, so we got our two feet cut out, and I got the uh, flat part over here uh, lined up. So we're gonna do done some uh, drilling. So the goal is to uh, get this bolt to go through. I thought about threading uh, and you know tapping these holes, but meh, we'll just get nuts and tack them on the back. Okay, check that out, eh? So it looks like a 5 16th inch bit was good for this bolt. Fits right on in there. Nice. So you notice I got the vice grip holding these two together because I have this flat side uh, together because this is going to be where it sits on the bracket. So we want these to be, you know, flush. That way when we put it on there, they both, you know, sit at the same size and angle and all that crap. And if you want, we can take them out and just hit them with the flap disc real quick so we know they're both perfectly the same. Flap disc, man. They're cool. Okay, now we can be assured that they will sit properly. Sweet! Okay, so we went to uh, the hardware store to get ourselves some nuts. 
make sure that they're facing uh, you know opposite directions of each other like so and like so and I'm just gonna put a little tack on each side just to hold it in place for convenience sakes yeah, yeah. all right so here's what we're looking at over here so here's our bracket with our little nut over down if you could focus thank you and you can see this one a little better all right, so got our nut tech welded, got the uh, flat side pointing down, which is good. Now the way that this uh, works, this, this bowl here is thicker than this thing, so even if you tighten it completely, it'll still be loosey and move around. That's how it's designed. So we got our flat plate. That'll sit like that. Now I didn't really leave uh, a lot of room for extra, but now the fun part is figuring out uh, how far this way it needs to go. And then the harder part of aligning the holes that we drill in this bar to match up with that seat bracket. So uh, yeah, that, that's going to be fun. Okay, so I've learned that no matter uh, <laughs> how hard you try, you can never drill both holes right the first time. So I put the seat down and got the left to right right, and then I drilled one hole. And now we're going to come over and do the other hole. So I moved it over to where the thing sits and then try to track it so it sits right and we're just about there looks like the hole needs to move outboard a little bit holy shit you know I mean I was I was talking about how like you know they normally don't fit but like it it actually fit it, am I getting good at this if I get too cocky then I'll probably end up break, uh breaking drill bits but wow look at that huh okay pro tip uh, you want to make sure that the entire seat bracket is freaking aligned with the floor before you decide to start marking holes I actually went two for two though or like, maybe that's four for four I had to uh, move the bracket this way because the seat kept freaking falling down and also those stupid little freaking brackets over here since they always spin around and they're never sitting where they need to wedged a piece of cardboard in there and tightened it up so now they actually stay in place. Bastards. All right, let's see if I can actually line this up and put a freaking tack down. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Got the seat sitting in there. We finally got our first shitty really tack weld going on. Uh, I found that I had to beat the shit out of the floor a little bit more. And I mean like I had to fucking hit it like I meant it. Cause there was a crease over there that just didn't want to bend. So I actually had to start folding it in on itself. And now there's plenty of clearance for the seat. Yay! You can see that little gap right there. Plenty of room now. Alright, so we're gonna put the tack down. Tack's down. Move it back and forth. Just make sure it's okay. It's sitting where it needs to be. And if it's good, then uh, we'll try and lay down a little more. I want enough just to hold the bracket in place. I'm gonna take it out and weld it. And try to not catch the seat on fire. That'll be fun. Okay, so a uh, quick tip, I was going to put down some tacks on this side and then take it out and weld the rest. Well, I found out that back end can uh, wiggle around quite a bit, quite a bit. So you can see just how far off that sticks. I don't think I would have welded that right. So the cool thing is we can bring the seat all the way back and go on to the other side. And then we can tack that. Mm -hmm. Then we can take it out and weld the proper. Okay. And again, this is the important part. Make sure it points forward. If this doesn't point forward, you're gonna hate yourself forever. Forever, ever, ever. If you can, try and sit in it too. Make sure it feels good. Make sure you got clearance on the door. Make sure you got clearance over there. Clearance, clearance everywhere. Okay. Wow. And this is why we do it in vehicle. Look at how freaking cockeyed that is, man. Holy shit. But again, that's probably because the seat bracket isn't straight in the vehicle, so. Yeah, best attack on both sides in vehicle. All right, so now we're gonna try and not burn the seat up. Go slow, you wanna make sure this thing is bolted down. If you take it out and, you know, it'll freaking warp all over the place. You don't want that. So we're gonna do another tack here, and then we'll run a little on uh, both sides. Sweet. Oh man, I'll tell you what, it's nice when the welder just works with you. Not half bad, especially for some of the other stuff you've seen on this channel. Look at that, huh? Not half bad. Cool. A little hard to get in there just because the uh, location. But yeah, she's welded on there. Cool. 
All right. So I think that makes the rear section done. Okay, so I mounted the seat up again. Sitting in it feels pretty good. I don't know if it's a little too far right or not. I mean, it's definitely straight now, but I'm not used to the seat being straight, so I don't know. We'll have to see how a longer trip goes. Worst comes to worst, we'll just wobble some holes out and give her a little bit of angular. So now we have this section to deal with. I'm thinking flat plate and then I guess a jumper here. I probably didn't have to cut that much, but I just had to cut to, you know, get things going. Now our contact issue is over there. Whoa. We're touching the floor. So I think I'm going to have to do the same thing to this side of the bracket. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, weld straight to that, I guess. Because we still got those bolts there that we can remove from. I figure why waste all the metal when we still got a perfectly good cross brace right there. Probably better than what I could do. So uh, yeah, I guess we're going to hack that little piece off and then uh, see what we need to bridge the gap. Okay, so this is what we're working with right now. So we got a little bracket right there. And then a little spacer on that. And it's got to be on this weird double pivoty thing. I can't show you now because there's not enough friction to make it work. But when you jack this up and down, what happens is that like moves around and pivots and stuff. But yeah, we're just going to go there to there. And uh, should be good on that side. And we just got to do the long one. Okay, so I just got two little tack welds on there so you can kind of see how this works. So notice how the uh, that little tiny bracket moves. The rest of it doesn't. Just kind of sits there. Now the only thing I messed up is I got the forward backward part wrong. So this is all the way up, and it's it's uh, stuck because it's the the bracket's too far forward. So when you try to go down, this little itty bitty dude starts contacting that. So what what I could do is either nip that up at the top there, or you know since we're only doing tacks, cut it and then inch this back a little. Ugh. You can see how this whole thing works. So. You know what I mean? Cool. Alright, now we can uh, tighten that up a little bit and just... Okay, so I think we are finally ready to do this outside the vehicle. It's a little easier to work on it when you're not breaking your back trying to figure everything out. And now that the gravity is kind of reversified, there's not as much weight, we can uh, properly see what's bending around and stuff. So we can see we got to fill that gap there. So cool, just do the same thing we did to that side. We just got a longer bracket. And what I'm going to do to prevent this side from bending is I'm going to have another bracket, just a little flat piece go from here to there. So that way all the weight is going here. And then this is just for the outside support. Now on the back, you can see that just this little flat bar ain't really going to cut it. It's just going to bend around a little. So I might do some kind of... Uh, I'll do some kind of uh, something or other. Maybe, maybe I'll do a back piece or something up top or some some kind of uh, alternate uh, axi. So just a quickie. Have yourself a nice file, you know? Clean off the edges. This bit over here goes in the hole. You spin it, cleans the hole out, huh? Yeah? A little quickie in case you didn't know that. That way you get a nice pretty hoe after you're done drilling it. Okay, so now we got this side all welded up, good to go. So now, what I'm planning to do is put that little thing in there, so that way, when you're sitting on this thing, the uh, you know the pressure from the seat is going to sit on this rail as well to keep this uh, from bending around so much. So if you try to imagine this bar trying to flex, it can't because that's going to be there. So now we got all kinds of support stuff going on. So I guess I'll try and uh, cut a piece out like that and tack that down in a few spots. Just so we got some kind of extra support on that side. Okay, so here's our little angular dangular. So now, if you look at how the weight will be distributed on the seat bracket, when you sit, it'll kind of spread the load out. So we'll have most of it going down right into that. And then we got the extra support to hold it in place and all that. So, nice little boxed in area. Should keep her nice and stout. So, now I guess I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do on the back. Cause, uh, we don't want any bendies. Okay, so, now we have two brackets here. 
we have a little flat plate and we also got a triangular plate so that hopefully uh, it stiffens that section up quite a bit. So now when we look at the flexies, we can push down on this and it looks like it's pushing more towards the metal section here now. Now I don't know if I have enough disc <laughs> to actually cut one more section but the best thing would be to have another section here to stiffen that up and then I think I'd be pretty comfortable with that. Just know you boys are going to get every last drop out of these goddamn cutting discs. I love these things. These little slicers, they're great. They cut through metal instead of grinding through metal. But they don't last very long. <laughs> In this little project, I've burned through all these things, man. They just... oh, man. Anyway, last brace. Okay, i got to be quick here, but there we go. We got that section all set up. And now she's actually quite stiff. When you push on it, she holds quite well. So what do you know? Little brackets like that do help. Okay, cool. I'm out of cutting discs. I'm getting tired. It's getting late. It's time to put the motherfucker in. Okay, so I think we're ready for final install. So I touched up all the uh, floor massaging with some paint. We are going to give uh, this POR stuff a second try because someone mentioned it was paint over rust, obviously, and it is direct to metal but it's weird that it's called a top coat and a direct to metal. How can it be both? How can you be a top coat and a direct to metal? That, that's not, uh, whatever. So we got that stuff. I just uh, cleaned up all the, you know, the dust and slag and all that and hit that with a coat of paint. It's been sitting here for 10, 15 minutes. I'm not gonna sit there for the whole hour. I'm just gonna bolt the thing in, but we're gonna see how this does on direct to metal as it's uh, so blah, 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 blah. So yeah, but this is the final design. So if you care to see what the heck this looks like. So just a little bracket there, a little double bracket there. And then this thing is literally just a strip with some bracing. Okay. Well now I think I'm gonna put this thing in that thing and bolt it all up and hopefully we are done. Okay, so everything is tightened down, uh, at least seat to bracket. And our, our uppy downy bit works, so that's cool. So nice. We got we got some lean. It looks like this is a little high, but not a whole lot we could do about that. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, uh the only other issue I see is this foot is raised. Because at first I couldn't figure out why this bracket didn't want to go down. So when I tightened it, pick this up. More contact area over here. And this is what happens when you just don't build it inside the uh, the truck. So all I gotta do is uh, I guess I'm gonna go through the effort of taking that out and just slice that little corner off, and uh, then we should be all right. That way you're not you know grinding against the floor and you move forward and backwards. So okay, I think I've done it. I think we've finally cracked it. Okay, so I took a bit off there. I could probably uh, use to take a bit more off, but uh, you know whatever it moves. Everything's bolted down. We got anti seize where it counts. And uh, yeah. So, as we can see, the seat sits a little far back, I think, from uh, what the other one did. It's also a little high in the front, I think. But whatever. So, we can take this little guy and we can shrink her down to size. And then, with the, uh, the auto controls, because this still works, now we can move it forward and backwards and we can pick the back up and we can pick the front up and we can you know whatever you want and we still got our leany bit over here and it's manual so you can do it fast so let's not forget the final touch headrest because you got to have somewhere to put your head whatever okay well there's a dunder seat you know i'm gonna clean up and test this out and i'll let you know how it does ah <sighs> Man, that took way longer than it needed to. Okay, so here we are, many, many days into the future. So, seat is still here, so that's a good sign. I actually haven't even checked on the paint yet, but she still looks nice and black and very clean. Not bad, P.O.R., not bad. Okay, so final verdict. Is it a good seat? Yeah, I guess. It's weird. It's really good. Uh, on the road for on the road stuff that lumbar mm, is gorgeous I love it and so does my back for the most part 
it's a little I don't know but on the trails it's it's a little too much because I find on the trails heading forward more as I'm trying to look out the window and see what the heck uh, five foot rock I'm trying to run over but uh, I wish if the lumbar was adjustable this thing would probably be perfect because everything else is good it's really just down to that but when you sit in this guy it ain't bad and along with our little uh, dead pedal over here right on the road ain't bad anymore it's nice so we got just enough space over here you don't have any problems and over here if you really need to you can squeeze your finger in there and move the thing up and down only thing I haven't figured out is uh, a way to mount the electrical controls to make them uh, accessible but uh, you know I just pick them up when I need it and whatever it does what I need to so overall it's better than the WJ for me the back supports better and uh, cloth man cloth is a lot nicer than leather <laughs> for most situations it's warm in the winter it's cool in the summer there's more friction so you don't slide around like literally on the leather seat when I go to try to reach this my butt just keeps sliding that way so it's just a perpetual <laughs> rotation of not actually doing anything useful so yeah if these had the heaters working these might be still kind of but back support man back support so eh, Toyota Sienna yes or no eh, I kind of say yes you know we're, we're an 8 out of 10 there besides the off-road lumbar thing and even then it's not that bad because you're, you're kind of just off the seat anyway it's it's good I'm I'm pretty happy with it so until I can find something better this will do this will do okay oh. Sorry about all the rambling, but that's how you take a uh, custom seat and a bunch of metal and turn it into something you can sit on. So, <laughs> yeah, mounting this uh, straight, very nice, and just, just in general, not bad. The rear, sometimes you can feel it move a little bit, like there's a little bit of squishy flex, but besides that, eh, it's not bad. It's a Jeep. What do you want? Okay. Good luck! <laughs>